Now we'd like to create a simple RBD simulation and import that uh, into Unreal. So let's go back to the object level and just like we did with the building asset, this is uh, or the building object, the instance object, uh, let's hide those two. Uh, and we'll start a new object which we'll use to create our RBD simulation. So in the 3D view, uh, let's press C and go down to get a box. Press enter to place it at the origin. We're going to use the parameters here to go uh, 0.5, 4, and 8. And then we're going to just leave that as is. Double click in, and now we can use a tab match size. Press N and enter. Set that to minimum so it's sitting on the ground. So now we have a simple wall. Let's go to up the object level. We'll just call this wall. And what we can do with this is we can select it and go to the uh, model. Tab, uh, tab on the shelf and press sh shatter. And this gives us an option. Click the chunk centers and type in 100. We now got 100 pieces in this fractured wall. Now we're going to go tab uh, assemble. This is a node that's going to help feed into an RBD sim that we're going to do here. And we're, what we really just need here is to create pack primitives and then to create a path attribute uh, that we can use with that and turn off connect inside edges. So we're going to put down a path attribute and we'll just add in slash path. There we go. And then a little widget at the end. Now we're going to go tab RBD uh, bullet solver. We're going to wire into the first part of that, set the display flag. Uh, the first thing we want to do is do collision, scroll down to ground collision, and set ground plane. And that's pretty much all we need to get a simulation of a kind. And just press play, and the wall will slowly crumble. That's not very exciting. We'd like to have a little more impact than that. So what we probably want to do is add another uh, collision object into the mix. So if we go into the network here, we can go off the side and go tab and type sphere, place down a sphere. And we're going to change its center to 2 and 3, or 2 and 1. So it's sitting in front of the wall. We set a keyframe on the tra uh, center X uh, by pressing the Alt key. Then we move it to negative 3, and we Alt click again uh, to create a second keyframe at, at 9. And there we go. It's moving through. But it's not colliding yet because we haven't plugged it in. So the next thing we want to do is wire that sphere into the fourth input, collision input, no uh, little input for the solver. And we're going to create a def use that as a deforming collision type. And we go back and press play. And now we see that the, the sphere is causing a little more impact on the wall than we had before. So that's good. There we go. Looking good. So once we have that, I mean, obviously you could spend time making it even more dramatic than that, but this is good for now. Uh, we're going to put a transform now node down to scale things to 100. We could scale this on import, but it probably doesn't hurt to do it here. Usually the Houdini digital asset, um, the Houdini engine will do that 100 time scaling for you because we work in meters and a lot of Unreal and other applications work in centimeters. But anyway, that's now we're going to do an FBX. Uh, output ROP, and we're going to do the frame range of 1 to 240, and we're going to set a file name. And we're going to put it in an FBX directory, slash FBX, slash, and then we're going to call it uh, wall underscore destruction dot FBX. So this will just be a single file that contains this animation, which we'll use, uh, and then we build the hierarchy with path attribute, and save to disk. That was why we added the attribute node earlier. So once we've saved that out, uh, so we're in here, let's hide the populate2 so we don't see the fire. Um, it will play when we press play, but we don't have to look at it while we're doing setup. So on the starter content, let's go back up to that uh, top level of content. 
and we're going to uh, import the FBX file. So just go up one level, FBX, wall destruction, and open. Now there's a bunch of options in here. Uh, you should follow along. These things need to be on. Uh, you definitely need import anim animation. And under the advanced tab here, make sure imp um, import meshes in bone, which already is on. Uh, and then do the advanced tab under here and change this to import normals and tangents. Once you finish that, go import. Imports that in. Ignore that for now because we never set up any UVs. Uh, now double click on the wall destruction here and you can see the, the, the wall being destroyed uh, based on that input. And now we can drag that um, over to here. And basically a bunch of bones were created and those bones are being used to, to animate this. Uh, and there you go. So we've added this destruction into here. Now there are other ways, uh, especially vertex animation textures is a method that's used for this kind of thing that you should definitely explore. Uh, but for this lesson we wanted to do something a little bit simpler. Uh, you could also set this up maybe hooked up with a blueprint or something so the explosion doesn't happen until you walk near it or some other trigger. But for now you've got a scene with uh, a building that you build, a procedural building, uh, instant garden, instant fire, uh, and an exploding wall. So hopefully you have a, an understanding of how procedural assets can work in Houdini and feed Unreal.